That look good. All right. So yeah, thanks, Amy. And um, as Amy mentioned, my uh, my name is Oliver Mueller Klein. I um, have been doing a PhD in the Environmental Science Policy and Management Department, um, which is in the College of Natural Resources at UC Berkeley. And I came in with a um, my my thesis is. Uh, just very broadly, the um, emerging field of data science applied to ecological systems, uh, which has uh, brought me into doing all kinds of work with data, uh, big data curation, um, with a lot of mathematical modeling and simulations and tools like developing, uh, developing tools to do such things, both storing data and also running um, uh said simulations so i've done work with a lot of web development which ends up being at this like intersection like web development that that involves or needs um, high performance computing in the back end so that's uh brought me into the exceed landscape nicely um and then my colleague heather who will um uh join in about explaining exceed after i give the first few slides yeah, um, maybe I'll just give a little introduction now briefly before we start, but um, I'm Heather Amato. I'm a PhD student in the School of Public Health and Environmental Health Sciences. Um, I'm newer to computing and cloud computing. Uh, my background is more in data analysis and data management in public health. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to uh, keep learning with everybody here about Exceed and um, dive in a little bit more. Okay, if you want to do the next slide. So, as Amy also mentioned, uh, EXCEED stands for the Extreme Science and Engineering Discovery Environment. So I like to explain it as uh, an ecosystem of compute resources. Mainly, these are uh, high performance computing, HPC clusters that are uh, across the nation, across the US. Um, some of them, for example, are at uh, San Diego, some of them are in Texas and others in uh, Pittsburgh. Um, so yeah, Exceed is this uh, interesting conglomerate of both HPC and also high throughput computing, HTC uh, resources, uh, which involves, uh, which includes uh, virtual machines uh, and resources to access those. Uh, next slide. So the core resources that we end up offering consultations uh, for and use uh, that are part of Exceed are is Bridges, Comet, Stampede 2, because there was a Stampede 1, uh, and that's in Texas, which uh, I, I feel like that name uh, makes a lot of sense for being there. Uh, and they actually they actually have bulls that are on the uh, in their like uh, data warehouse and on the actual physical clusters. It's, they're like painted on there at Stampede, which I think is great. Um, anyway, then there's Jetstream, which is the uh, cluster that has virtual machines and Expanse, which is the newest, uh, the newest cluster. Okay, thank you, Bill. Sorry if I'm uh, rubbing my mic. Um, can people hear me clearly? Okay. We can hear you, Oliver. It's not a big deal. It was just uh, rustling a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Maybe it's uh. Well, I'll I'll try to go. I'll I'll try to go uh, do this. Maybe. This. Is this more clear? Yes. Okay. So thank you. Um. And then Expanse is the newest uh, uh, cluster, which is out of San Diego. So Comet is also at San Diego and Expanse uh, just open there, um, just open for allocations to be submitted. And it's kind of thought of in terms of the uh, peak teraflops and also the amount of uh, GPU power it's thought of as a Comet 2.0. So um, also 
I should mention that there's a lot of emphasis now on AI and sort of generally, so that includes uh, deep learning and machine learning. Um, compute at a lot of these clusters. So Bridges, Comet, and Expanse have, um, have dedicated AI um, sort of uh, allocations as a part of them, which is interesting. So Jetstream, uh, I will mention real quick, um, is a very interesting resource because there's a web interface to accessing Jetstream and you are, can, users can run uh, interactive virtual machines that are sitting on top of this, um, this uh, high, you know, high performance com uh, compute cluster that's on the back end. So next slide, before I turn it over to Heather, I will just mention that uh, something that's really cool that uh, I would like to push our group to be able to do more of, and it would be great if there's researchers who have uh, different either client side or web apps that they're developing as interfaces to uh, mathematical model simulations or uh, big data that they've curated as part of their work is Exceed offers uh, almost a program to, uh, you can sort of think about it like renting out compute research, uh, compute research developers, like code developers through their extended collaborative support services program. And this is all free to researchers, but there will be then dedicated um, uh, actual uh, employees as part of XC that will spend a portion of their time helping you to write the code to develop your project. And those projects can be thought of as science gateways, which um, can get official, uh, can be officially named, sci your projects can be officially named science gateways and you can get uh, allocations to develop those. So those are really uh, things like compute web interfaces and um, uh, interfaces to big data, as I mentioned. So I'm going to turn it over to Heather now to finish up this Exceed introduction. Thank you. Thanks so much, Oliver. Um, <clears throat> so uh, next, I'm just going to talk briefly about the different types of allocations. So how you can access access Exceed resources, and um, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on a couple of the allocations. But um, so first type of allocation is this campus champion allocation. Uh, UC Berkeley has a campus champions allocation, which is primarily for giving new users quick access to test out different Exceed resources to see if it's a good fit for the research. So if you're interested in accessing Exceed quickly, just to see what, what it's about and if it would be a good fit, um, feel free to reach out to Berkeley Research Computing um, and we can get you set up typically in just a few business days. It's a really quick turnaround. Um, and with the next type of allocation, uh, startup allocations, it's also a relatively quick turnaround time. Um, I think Oliver mentioned it would be typically within a few weeks you can get access. And uh, this is typically for small scale projects or pr uh, preliminary work. Um, there's also research allocations which offer more computing resources than startup allocations, but the application process and turnaround time for access are a bit longer. And then finally, uh, there are education allocations, which are available for classes and training so students can access exceed resources for course related work. Um, and each of these allocations typically lasts for one year, but they pretty much all of them can be extended with an allocation renewal request, um, so you can keep them going every year. Um, and yeah, so I think most researchers typically will want to decide between a startup and a research allocation. So I'm going to um, compare those a little bit more in depth today, but um, I also want to mention that there's a wealth of information on all of these allocations and how you get one on the Exceed website. Um, so as I mentioned, startup allocations are primarily for short-term projects or to obtain benchmark results before you request a lengthy research allocation. Um, so the Exceed allocation request guidelines actually recommend that researchers first request a startup allocation to gather these sort of benchmark results before submitting a research allocation request. Um, since the research request requires more specific and really comprehensive information on your computing needs and your approach. So you might want to test things out and, and see 
um, see if you can get some information to include on your research allocation request um, by using the startup. Uh, these allocations typically last for one year, as I mentioned. Um, and if you have a small scale project that doesn't require a lot of resources, but might last for multiple years, you can request a multi-year project. Um, startup allocations, as I mentioned, do have limited resources in terms of both com computing and storage uh, compared to the research allocations, but are typically a lot easier and quicker to access. Um, and these allocation requests are evaluated continuously on a rolling basis throughout the year. Um, and they really only require a brief project abstract, a very short compute needs summary, um, and then a couple of CVs from the PIs and co-PIs. Research allocations are intended for larger scale research projects and involve a more competitive and lengthy application process, but they offer more uh, resources compared to startup allocations. These allocations also typically last one year, but can be renewed annually if you submit a progress report and a request for renewal. And research allocations are evaluated quarterly each year. Um, and just a heads up, the next submission period is coming up between December 15th and January 15th. So if you're interested, you might wanna start prepping your um, application. Um, and these applications, the requests are pretty lengthy. They require this main document, it's 10 to 15 pages, including a background, research objectives, a resource usage plan, justification for your resources, um, access to other resources. And then you also have to submit um, a few pages on code performance and resource costs, as well as your, your CVs for your PIs and co-PIs. Um, and just to note that each PI can only have one active research allocation at a time, uh, but PIs can request that additional users are given accounts to use the allocation. So multiple researchers could use a PI's allocation. Um, yeah. So those are the two primary allocations that folks might be interested in. Um, but if you're interested in getting started, I would suggest uh, starting with a uh, getting a, an Exceed user portal account. You can create an account without uh, applying for an allocation just so you can um, start accessing the training materials and all the online information uh, through the portal. And then, um, yeah, just, I would strongly encourage you to check out their documentation online and their training materials. They're really extensive. They have lots of videos and workshops. Um, and there, there's a lot of information on the different types of resources and the architecture of each resource, as well as the different allocations. So you can identify uh, the allocation that's gonna best suit your, your current needs. Um, and then you'll also, you know, you wanna prepare and submit your allocation request. And um, if you need help at any step of the way, we would strongly encourage you to reach out to Berkeley Research Computing. Um, feel free to send us an email and we're happy to help um, with any any questions you have uh, while you're while you're getting started with Exceed, um, and just briefly, we wanted to share some online resources with you all. Um, and I think Amy, these slides will be made available. I'm assuming after. Yeah, cool. Yep. Um, yeah. So again, just check out the online training on Exceed. Really great. Um, they have boot camps and online videos and. Um, as well as webinars that are all posted on their website. They also have really detailed review criteria for the research allocations to help you prepare a really solid competitive application. Um, and then uh, Research IT and Berkeley Research Computing also has information on our own computing resources and how they compare to exceed resources. Um, and you know, it's not always a, a you know one resource fits all research projects, you might need multiple different resources for different uses and stuff. So um, it's good to just see the lay of the land a little bit there. And then finally, Oliver um, created these exceed allocation request templates that he has uh, available on his GitLab page. So if anybody wants to start with these for um, putting together your requests, uh, they are available and I strongly suggest you check them out. And yeah, that's it. Um, Thank you so much. And feel free to, again, send us an email at brc at berkeley.edu if you have any questions or feel free to drop into our virtual Zoom office hours um, on Wednesdays or Thursdays. Thank you, Heather and Oliver.
was great. Does anybody have any questions for them? Also, feel free to ask any questions on the mic, or if you'd like to post them in chat, I would also be happy to read them. And I'm seeing some questions coming in. Um, could you post the links for the resources in chat? Great idea, Charles. And I'm seeing a question, can you renew to extend an allocation? The answer to that is yes. Yeah, I, yes, as in you can renew to extend an allocation. So you can, uh, there are examples of researchers that um, have gotten startup allocations, which are for one year, and then they um, have renewed them even up to twice. So as in ended up getting three years of that allocation. Thank you, I see another question. What are the most common barriers to using Exceed? Great question. Yeah, I don't know about you, Oliver, but I would say, I mean, a lot of people just aren't familiar with it in the first place. So that's a barrier is just um, understanding, you know, what it can offer and what it's for. But um, I think one potential barrier for folks is the lack of secure environments. I don't think that there are a lot of, um, if any, opportunities for using secure data with Exceed. So that's a, a big barrier if that's the type of data you're working with. Yeah, that's a good point. And then and it is a good thing to mention uh, what, what uh, the second question Jason asked about, uh, you are able to take your allocations to another EDU environment. So uh, Exceed, uh, how would you say this? Exceed is your allocations are agnostic to what university you are at. So let's say you were in a PhD program or a postdoc or, or you know faculty, whatever at one university and then you end up uh, getting another position um, at another university, you still have that exceed allocation. It goes uh, across, you don't have to get a new one, even though your um, uh, affiliations change. Perfect, you yeah. know, I'd also, oh, sorry, go ahead, Heather. Oh, no, sorry. I was just gonna mention also that um, postdocs can also be PIs um, for exceed purposes, which is really useful and yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's a really important point, thank you. I also just wanted to take a moment and introduce a few folks that are on this call who are really involved in Exceed. Actually, I'm really excited to see Ruth Marinshaw here. If you'd like to jump on and say hi and say what your role is, and then also Aaron Coolidge um, from the D-Lab. Um, if you would like to jump on and say hello, you're very welcome. Sure, well, thank you, Amy. It, it's good to attend another one of these cloud meetups. And when I saw the topic, it's like, I've got to attend this thing. So Aaron and I are Exceed Campus Champion Regional Champions. So if uh, Heather or others at Berkeley or anyone on the call has questions that you're not sure how to answer, um, Aaron and I, if we don't know the answer, we can get the answer for you, but I also chair the Exceed Service Provider Forum and am part of the Exceed Senior Management Team. So it's it's always interesting to hear people's perspectives on Exceed and largely the community thinks of Exceed as a bunch of HPC resources or cloud like like compute resources. But actually those are provided by the NSF outside Exceed. Those are individual awards to Pittsburgh or San Diego or whomever. And then Exceed exists solely to coordinate all of that. And as Heather and others said, you know, a big piece of the glue of that coordination is this allocation process. And as Heather referenced, you know, a big limitation in answer to one of the questions is that you can't deal with secure data in the Exceed environment. There's, there's a no need for that, but as everyone on the call realizes, 
lawyers get involved at every step along the way. And, and you know, public institutions are different than private. And California law is different than Pennsylvania law. So setting aside high risk data, um, a, a really important consideration that was emphasized by the presenters in getting a research allocation, cycles themselves are very limited. So your code scaling and your code performance metrics make a huge difference in the reviewer's assessment and relative ranking of your needs versus that. So get that startup allocation, like they said, do your code analysis, demonstrate your scaling, and these folks can help you and their webinars and things. But Exceed is more than just the cycles. There are all kinds of training opportunities, whether or not you actually end up using the compute resources. And uh, as was referenced, that the ECSS program, which is also allocated for your code optimization and development is really, really very valuable. Um, there's all kinds of uh, broader engagement programs as well. And if you're here because you need compute and data cycles, which most of us are, there are a whole bunch of new resources, new compute and data resources coming on board to exceed in the next kind of year and a half. Expanse went live on Monday, as was referenced earlier, but there are some novel resources, um, ARM-based systems, as well as data resources solely data resources coming on board in the next year and a half. So uh, it's great to see so many people here and to see Berkeley Research Computing so engaged in supporting our folks. But if Aaron and I can help you, we're happy to help. Thank you, Ruth. Aaron, would you like to say hi really quickly? Yeah, first I'll just say it's nice to see a lot of familiar faces and some new faces as well. Um, uh, and when it comes to Exceed and our campus resources, um, we are here collectively together to help you navigate this landscape and understand, uh, based on your needs, what is the best fit of the set of resources that will support your research. Uh, and I think an important thing to call out, um, this Exceed program is nationwide. This includes research universities and some nonprofits and, and some other folks outside of academia uh, who can access uh, these resources. Um, and it's a competitive landscape. And they've begun asking a question, what resources do you have available on your campus? And basically the subtext, why aren't you using those first before these other resources. So we can kind of help you navigate those challenges. Sometimes actually it's great to use the on-campus Savio resources or other resources we have, um, or other times there's these novel things that like Ruth was pointing to that we don't have here yet on campus. So that's actually a good justification to use one of these other resources, but we can help provide the guidance collectively uh, to match you with the right solution. Perfect, thank you. Um, I do see another question in the chat. Do the codes have to be parallel? And what are the scalability requirements? Codes do not have to be parallel, although it is certainly true that many of the systems um, from an architectural point of view favor parallelized work. Uh, so you need to demonstrate scalability from whatever resource perspective makes sense for the kind of problem that you are solving. Maybe it's that it's uh, essentially serial, but with 4,000 cores versus the 20 on your local desktop, you could solve world hunger or, or something. You know, you could reduce the time to solution by a factor of X. And it's a problem that really matters to science, not just bench science, but science and discovery broadly speaking. So you need to provide numbers based on whatever the resource metric it is. If it's just that I wish I had 32 cores on my computer, but I only have 12, 
interesting. So think about, you know, what is it? Do you need more storage? Do you need more memory? It's not just about cores, but think about, and that's where Berkeley Research Computing can help you too. What, what are the, um, the constrained technology resources that are inhibiting your growth? And get a startup allocation to test variations on those, and then that will give you a strong basis for your allocation proposal. I hope that helps. Awesome, thank you. Um, and thank you to Heather and Oliver, and thank you to Aaron and Ruth for jumping in. And I, I'll turn it over to Jason. <laughs> 